Hi, everybody. Hi. Themes to be seen podcast. Matt Klaus. Terracastic. Elvis. Uh, we just finished our last film of the weekend for the Hell's Half Mile Film Festival. We are exhausted. What a weekend. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I want to go to sleep now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I know, and we have um, to go back to work tomorrow. You know, we actually have one more film that one of the filmmakers sent us mm -hmm. that we still wanted to take notes on. Like, he sent us the, the film in, uh, in an email. We actually... We watched a movie that he was also watching, and then we went across the street to McDonald's, and we <laughs> ran there. into him there, yep. and we told him who we were and how... We wanted to see his movie, but it conflicted with, you know, other movies that we also wanted to see. And he was like, oh, well, I can just send you a it, link. It was funny because he actually waved at us first. Yeah. He's like, really I think it nice was just, guy. His name is Ronald Short. He's, yeah. <laughs> he, the irony is he makes features. Mm -hmm. um, he's a super nice guy. He literally just walked all over Bay City. Yeah. Um, he's from Texas. He's from Austin. Yeah. yeah, and we asked him if he was having a good time, and he said he was really enjoying Bay City because he could walk everywhere. Uh -huh. um, and we did literally see him walking, walking everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> um, we, after our last video was about I Want My MTV, but we actually saw one or two films yesterday after that. And then you had your interview. And the, Right. If you haven't seen my interview with Andrew Gibson, director of Gutterbug... Check that out. That's also on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Mm -hmm. um, he's a super cool guy. He it was just like a cool like conversation. Um, it wasn't really like an interview as much as just getting to talk, just getting to get some stuff out. Have Which we actually had some fun? Really liked too. Yeah. Because I think that's different from like the interview circuit that he's used to he said he'd, he'd done other interviews where it was very formal and it's it's just not fun after a while um after i want my mtv i'm yeah we're both <laughs> we are asleep on our feet i don't work is not going to be fun this week no um after i want my mtv we saw probably my second favorite film of the whole festival mm -hmm. it was called happy face um it's uh, about a young man who puts himself in a support group for people with physical deformities. Um, all the actors who who are acting the the parts of in the in the support group actually, I mean, they were people with actual um, disabilities and and deformities mm -hmm. of no fault of their own, um, whether it be genetic or or something that happened to them. And they were all awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, just good acting all the way around this film. Um, I'd say about a third of it is in French. Mm -hmm. It was shot in Montreal, Montreal. I believe. Um, the lead actor, Robin Lamu, uh, was mm -hmm. excellent. He was awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to see... We watched the whole movie, and the whole time we're like, he seems like a Phoenix brother. Like, mm -hmm. he, he has this very early 90s look to him. These very sculpted cheeks and this long, like, flowy hair. He the looks whole... like a sculpture, he, almost. He's an attractive young man, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, that that really feeds into the film. Because I mean, he, that's what the whole point is. He, um, the begin In the beginning of the film, he's an imposter in this mm -hmm. in this support group. He, he tapes his face up so they don't know that he looks like that. Mm -hmm. um, I... That's my probably my second yeah. favorite film of the festival. I it was great. And we'll go into each of these movies in more detail when we do our recap episode. Yeah, we're as gonna well. do like an episode series, um, just on the films we saw at Hell's Half Mile and some of the experiences we had. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, we get to do some cool stuff with that episode in particular. Um, I know there was some talk with Hell's Half Mile of. Advanced recording equipment. I know I've the the um, complaint that I've gotten from people who'd like to listen to the show is that our audio has some issues when you connect to Bluetooth or you're not listening listening to it straight to audio, that it's really quiet. We are going to try to figure out a way to remedy that. Uh, that's a bummer. Uh, last night we saw a movie called My Soul to Take. 
My Soul to Keep. My Soul to Keep. Which we were very excited about because I think it's the sole horror film that the festival was playing. Yep. And, and it was Michigan made. It was Michigan made. It looked a lot like the kid adventure movies of the 80s. Kind of nostalgic feeling, but set contemporarily. Uh, we talk about movies like The Goonies mm-hmm. and um, The Gate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I mean, it's quite a bit more like The Gate than The Goonies. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we're pretty divided on this one. Yep. For the most part... I think this team could make a very good scary movie. It yeah. had the had right awesome... suspense. It wasn't just jump scares. Um, like very when you good thought there was going to be, there was parts where I was like, "They're going to jump scare us," and then they wouldn't, and then they'd hit you with a big scare on an offbeat, which I thought is a really cool thing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was the ending that is kind of yep. dividing us. Yep. So. Not have to. <laughs> um, the all the child actors uh, were legitimately their age, elementary school age kids, mm-hmm. uh, and they were all awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all actual Michiganders. Yep. Uh, I I had a lot of fun watching ninety percent of this movie. <laughs> like I really seriously like I was having a lot of fun. I actually stopped taking notes at a certain point, and I was like. She's still going. I'm fine. <laughs> like I just wanted at, at a certain point, I just wanted to watch the movie, um, and it was it was good, right up to a certain <laughs> point. I, was, I I threw my pen in the air. And there was a Q and A after with um, the producer. One of the well, he had various roles on the movie. He was. A co-writer, an editor, a producer, and he did even more. I think he might have had a hand in the casting as well because I think the very p- first person they cast was the young boy. It was the main mm-hmm. young man, and he he was excellent. I actually yeah. look forward to seeing him in other things. He was great. I know. Um, and this morning we woke up barely. We barely made it to this. <laughs> mo- we made it there Sorry. way on time, but yeah. we were not moving. I think. Um, we didn't really know what was in store with this movie because the trailer is very intense and we were like, oh, it could go yeah. either way. I, um, but I was actually I'm pushing so for cutting happy. this one. I was pushing, I'll admit, <laughs> was. I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> I was pushing for cutting this one from our schedule just because we were so tired and we put so much into this already. Mm-hmm. Um, but she wanted to see it mm-hmm. and we made it. And I'm happy we did because it was really good. <laughs> this was, it was such good. a well-made, intelligent movie with great acting. Nonfiction. Probably my favorite of the whole weekend. Yeah. We are very close in what the best films are. So, like, yeah. I would have, like, Gutterbug, Postal, or Happy Face and Postal would be like lateral, uh, she would have postal and then happy face and gutter bugger lateral. So there it's it's pretty even as to what we mm-hmm. think of the films uh, throughout the weekend. It's based on a true story um, about a uh, young man in 2016, I think it happened. It's a simple story, but they were able to do so much with it and the special Makeup effects and everything. The audience was. There were some times where there's. and gasping. This was a very fun. Horror audience. movie level makeups yeah. in this. Like, there were some. <laughs> if the you've audience ever seen, reactions were great. If you've ever seen the film House of Sand and Fog, mm-hmm. think of the, the worst physical thing in that movie, which I'm pretty sure everybody can agree uh, that there's one particular part in that movie where you go, ah! Uh, that happens in this film also slightly differently. The entire audience, you saw the entire audience just shift. Like <laughs> we were sitting in the back and you saw everybody go, Oh no. Um, basically everything that could go wrong for the character in this movie is going ar- wrong and you're just but in it for the ride. What's but... special about this film is that there's really only most of the time there's one actor on screen at a time. Mm-hmm. There's never, there's hardly ever a time where you see two actors in conflict on screen at the same time. And that's very difficult to do and make it engaging. And this film did it beautifully. Detailed and the juxtaposition between scenes was 
Yeah. Excellent. It's a it's a true story about a young man named Philip Tress. Uh, if you want to <laughs> get the get the jazz on it, I'm pretty sure you can Google his name because he yeah. allowed he allowed the filmmakers to use his actual real name. They legally couldn't use anyone else's name, but he gave full consent. <laughs> uh, and this story is insane. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe this really. But happened. very relatable. There were times I think we could all yeah. identify with the frustrations that this character went through. You could it, it's it's weird because he's doing these ridiculous things and you're like I, I that, and it doesn't seem finding, like a stretch. You're finding out more as the movie goes on they did so a it's good constantly job. Yeah. surprising you and They did a uh, good job of keeping the things that it. would make you <laughs> that would give you an emotional response. Mm-hmm. They did a good job of keeping those things secret until just the right time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's there. There were times where I was uh, slightly differing from the audience, though. The, the, the other, the rest of the audience would be laughing at something, and I would be kind of tearing up because I felt for the guy in a different way than the audience was. Uh, some of the laughter, like you said, was probably out of discomfort. Yeah. Just being mm-hmm. uncomfortable about the situation the film puts you in, but yeah. I was like, man. I feel for this guy. <laughs> I wish it wasn't like this for him. Um, and then it just seems like every little thing. Mm-hmm. Like, like there's a part where he's sitting on a bathtub and you're like, oh, okay. He's trying to do this thing and it sucks. And then he reaches out to put his hand on the towel rack and he falls. And he reaches up to grab the shower curtain and that falls and he falls it. And it's just like any little thing he does causes this <laughs> horrible chain reaction of things that just compiles which is kind of how his life went. <laughs> it was so unfortunately rough. Ugh. It was like watching a, a movie made by sword and scale. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> then after that, we literally left. We walked across the street, got coffee yeah. from McDonald's, and then came back within an hour for our last film of the weekend, mm-hmm. which was. Uh, it was a documentary called Recorder, the Marion Stokes Project, which I had read about this lady before I even knew there was a movie. Basically, from 1978 to 79, she recorded TV 24 hours a day for 30 years. And now um, the Internet Archives have all of her tapes, and they're going to digitally remaster all of them and put them online for free yeah so now all these moments that certain people who probably aren't going to be happy about it we're so sure we're just gone Mm -hmm. um are all on vhs tapes in this very secure facility and they're putting them all unedited on the internet for anyone to watch so it's this um, even balance of this woman's story mixed with all this incredible news footage, like things you might have forgotten about, and then seeing it. There just is really especially the September eleventh footage. The way that they put this together, they had it was hard to watch. Um, four news stations all up on one screen, and you're basically. CNN had the footage mm-hmm. first and then you're watching in real time and seeing like what's the next news station that is following up with this and um so you have what was the order I had it written down CNN ABC CBS and then Fox and then they also at one point had BET up in the corner mm-hmm. because there's an old they're contrasting the CNN um, footage of the, the the events of September 11th with a baby face video from 2001. And they're right next to each other the whole time. Like, this baby face video is showing at the time the second plane hit. And you can, they have the time tags and everything on there. Mm-hmm. And it, it's very, I, I actually didn't watch a lot of it. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't watch a lot of it. It was... Um, It was was difficult to watch. Mm -hmm. There were some points they started, uh, they showed some very um, derivative footage, not derivative, uh, uh, divisive footage of some people, some things some people had to say uh, during um, some of the shooting, the Trayvon Martin shooting in particular, Mm -hmm. where a gentleman who was on CNN said something and then realized he was wrong. 
And that the whole audience went, oh, my God. So, yeah, Marion Stokes, she started, like, her first job was a librarian. And then um, she was actually fired because she was she was a part of the Communist Party. And then she became involved with TV. She was on a show called Input. Input. In the 60s. And she was very determined to seek truth and she believed in the importance of fact checking so she believed that recording everything nonstop was gonna make a difference someday um in the way they s- speak about the way marion stokes thought about how news was covered mm-hmm. and about how it shaped social thought patterns she was literally 45 years ahead of her time. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you see the things she said in 1969. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then you you look at the way things are now and you, you realize that she knew she knew what was coming. She was such an intelligent lady. Mm-hmm. Look, she did sacrifice a lot of her family life for doing this because she and her husband did isolate themselves and they did become hoarders but she was so determined that this was her purpose and it's not like they had an odd relationship either they loved each other Mm -hmm. very much like Mm -hmm. even they had uh what four people taking care of them they had a chauffeur Mm -hmm. uh two uh, a chauffeur a nurse a caretaker um and all these people loved them very much. It's not like they were um, unusual people. Mm-hmm. They were just so determined to do this thing that they thought was right for society mm-hmm. that they the um, her second husband's daughters were adults at the time they got married. Yeah. And her son was an adult at the time they got married. And they just ceased all communication with them. And that comes into play a couple times throughout the film. Mm-hmm. Um, mostly... What you, who you hear from is her son. Yeah. Who, they, they talk about how there was trepidation between the two of them that he was not as intelligent as her. Which she could be cruel about because she did expect people to be on that same intellectual level with her and she especially expected it out of her son. And then you hear him speaking and you're like, w- but he's... Mm-hmm. extremely intelligent mm-hmm. he's this super intelligent guy that he, there are sometimes he was using these uh, extravagantly intelligent mm-hmm. words that i didn't even know what they meant but you just by context you understood what he said and you realized okay she's looking down on his amount of of social intellect mm-hmm. and he's this intelligent what would have what would talking to her have been like yeah. they said she she amassed Fifty to sixty thousand, forty to fifty thousand books. After her death, there were storage units filled with her tapes, and he did um, donate a lot of her um, books. He donated a lot of her books. Um, he cleared out uh, three apartments and two houses worth of just amassed items. Um, I, I believe at one point they said that she got obsessed with restaurant syrup dispensers yeah um it's insane to think that this person that isolated themselves for over 20 (laughs) elvis just passed gas like and i i I lost my breath um (laughs) this person who isolated themselves for over 20 years did this amazing thing that now they should be very known for like the entire mm-hmm. world who should know who this lady is mm-hmm. because she started during the iran hostage crisis yep that's what she initially became obsessed with because she was watching the news and she noticed the story kept changing and so she wanted to document all of it so that people could fact check uh, fact check on their own <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and then it ended up at the end of her life, they said that she had 25 VCRs mm-hmm. recording 25 different televisions in her home. Yeah. And she passed away 
sitting upright in her chair, and this was while Sandy Hook. Uh, New, New, Newtown. 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 Yeah. yeah. The Newtown shooting. The Newtown shooting. Was and like, going and on. they were scared. One of the things, her son was sitting there with her, mm-hmm. and he he noticed that something that she wasn't doing well, but they didn't want to turn the TV off <laughs> in case she happened to wake up and and be upset. Mm-hmm. That's how much they knew this meant to her that yeah. he he knew she was dying but still didn't want to turn the TV off. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a a wonderfully made film. Um, it 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 would I mean we have to kind of set this one aside because it is a documentary when it comes to level of films where we only are really rating the narrative right. films. <laughs> but I want my MTV and and recorder both are amazing. Um, we would highly. Yeah. Recommend both. Uh, so a lot of good stories this weekend. A lot of good stories. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of good experiences. We a lot of we met a lot of people. Yeah. Um, shout out to Ronald Short and Andrew Gibson for just being so cool and lending us their time and help. Um, this episode that we're going to record out of all this uh, is going to be extensive and I, I think you'll all find something you can you like in it um we would recommend actually seeing most of these mm-hmm. i think there's only one non-recommended yeah yeah and we'll get into that right a little bit later um but other than that i, I hope you all followed along with us and I hope they have us next year. Are you going to yawn or something? <laughs> he did. Did I he? I think he just did. Okay. Um, we would suggest if you liked what you heard from us this year, get a hold of it was HHMFest.com. Mm-hmm. HHMFest.com. Keep, a hold of, keep in touch with them uh, to buy your passes for next year. Um, we didn't get to go... We forgot to pick up a survey. <sighs> We're just so tired. Uh, um, we didn't get to go see any of the music, but if you're more of a, mm-hmm. a, a person who likes, likes the nightlife and, and parties that only happen once, we drove past that warehouse. Oh <sighs> my God. Mm-hmm. It was packed. There were people... And the door is like a freight door that you go mm-hmm. into. There were people flooding out like the party was in the street. Yeah. And it was super cool. We just didn't we were just so tired. Mm-hmm. We couldn't we didn't have a chance to uh review the warehouse being to see the warehouse I this know. year. Um hopefully next year we we learned from what we did this year. We'll just get a hold of the filmmakers and have them send us the <laughs> film so we can cover more. We'd have liked to do more shorts. Yeah. Um we'd have liked to do more films. There's one showing tonight that we We'd like to see, but we just can't. We have to start prepping for going back to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so. um, we'd like to see, um, what's it called? After So Many Days? I believe so. Yeah, and I Am That are the two films that I'd have liked to have oh, seen. Oh, yeah. Uh, we were hoping to get a hold of those films. Hopefully we can do those in future episodes if we can get a hold of those filmmakers and have them mm-hmm. help us out. Um, but we are still going to need to watch, um, the film sent to us by awesome filmmaker Ronald Short, who also made a film in 2014 called Billy and Theodore. Mm. Um, and we're going to add that one and it's good. It's called, uh, Good Feels on Wheels. Mm -hmm. And that one looks good. We just had to, we were in our picking and choosing process. We had to kind of go see one over another because we can't be in two places. Yeah, and we knew we wanted to keep today simple since we do have to go back to work on Monday. We'd like to be able to do this as a job. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows a podcast network or a producer. <sighs> like, this was exhausting, though. Mm-hmm. We worked really hard. Like, we didn't. We knew that this was something we wanted to do, but... We weren't aware how we had never physically been hard it was to be. a film festival before. We didn't really know what to expect. He looks very official in the way he's sitting there. I know. 
Um, you guys can't see, but he's got his paws just like this just on the on table. The table. He's very um, business-like. <laughs> um, yeah, so next year we'll learn from some of the mistakes we made today. Um, or this weekend. <laughs> but this was super fun. And we mm -hmm. want to thank Hell's Half Mile for us being literally the only recognized podcast covering. We, yeah. we aren't a big production. We don't have a great audio setup. But I think they just saw our our intention and mm -hmm. uh, our knowledge of the subject and agreed to l let us be a, a guinea pig in allowing podcasts to cover the festival and right. we we can't thank them more hhmfest.com i know it's easy for us to cover this one because it's five minutes from my house yep right over the, the bridge mm -hmm. over the um, river through the woods uh, <laughs> but they they gave us these nifty these nifty passes mm -hmm. and we just went we just walked in there was some pretension it, it, we wanted to do a wayne's world backstage pass thing and then we never got to <laughs> yeah uh but that's because most of the time when we were getting into a film we're literally just running past yeah. the door person yeah um <laughs> but it was awesome Thank you to Hell's Half Mile. Uh, thank you to Andrew Gibson and Ronald Short and Ron, who was our main contact with the festival. Don. Don. I'm tired. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don and Dawn, mm -hmm. who were our main contacts to the festival. Um, hopefully we can work a little closer with the festival next year. That would be cool. <laughs> all right thank you everybody and we hope that you like our upcoming hell's half mile special episode series adopt don't shop think pink <laughs>